folks, how are you going today? Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on advanced pen and ink. So I'll be working on a full size sheet of watercolour paper um, and it's a great scene putting into practice all the techniques we've been learning over the last few weeks. So I really hope you enjoy it and um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, press the little bell thingy and then when all my new films come along you'll automatically get them. And I hope you enjoy, thank you very much. Hi everyone, how are you going today? Today I'm going to be working on a full size pen and ink um, sketch of an old Queenslander. So I've diluted my soluble ink and I've got my pen ready. Um, so I also have a watercolour brush. So I hope you've um, watched episode four, how to make your own ink pens. Um, and you've also watched episode five, um, basic pen and ink techniques, because that um, will be needed, your skills will be needed for this. Um, also, you would need to have watched episode six, semi-advanced pen and ink. So now I'm um, roughing in um, with the pen and ink. I'm working on um, just white cardboard today. There's many different surfaces that pen and ink um, can be worked on. Um, in one of my previous episodes, I teach you how to stretch watercolour paper, if that's what you're going to use. Um, or if you're only just beginning, you can work on photocopying paper, and I talk all about how to prepare that before you start. Today I'm working on card, which is actually matte board. Matte board is um, the board that goes around the edge of a watercolour painting. Just popped up into the left hand corner of the screen now um, is my trademark, which appears in my books and in all of my films. I write the Jane Agatha series, which is historical fiction for all ages. And throughout the story is a little dog that has a map of Australia on it. So obviously this film has been sped up. This house is situated just about 15 minutes from where I live. It's in a little town called Moor, which is just before you get to Blackbutt in South East Queensland. I've used this um, particular building in lots of paintings that I've done, using all different medium. So now I'm going to be using the wet and wet technique, which you use, oh, there's a hair in that. Um, I'll be using the wet and wet technique, which you use for um, pen and ink, but also for watercolour as well. So you can see the water's being absorbed quite quickly into that paper, which isn't always necessarily a good thing. That's the number 10 watercolour brush that I'm using. So I'm going to be putting trees here in this in this picture, so slap on plenty of water. I'm working on the board that is at a slight angle, you can see how it's running down. I've done that deliberately, it helps the ink flow. It's a nuisance about the shine on it, on the uh, water, but never mind. I think sometimes that pen and ink is a very good introduction um, to watercolour. You can learn a lot about tonal value by using pen and ink. We discussed that in detail in episodes um, 4, 5 and 6. Now I'm coming in with some ink, not pure ink, it has been diluted as I've spoke about in the previous episodes. Just on the left hand screen now is um, an oil painting which I did of the, of the property um, with the Clydesdale horse in the background and um, a cow and my two little Janagatha dogs. Just 
just working on one of the cows now and um, you can see how I put the water in and this is, you know, normal speed. Um, it's lovely how it flows, isn't it? I'm using a tissue now to dust out or um, sort of dab out um, the excess ink. It's a very quick um, painting. I, I think the whole of this took me, I don't know really, maybe an hour or an um, hour and a half or something like that. Um, so it's a really quick way of painting or pen and inking, I should say. And also especially good technique for um, if you're working on location in the bush or something like that, and you wanna just do a quick reference for a future oil painting. Um, you, you By doing this, you can, um, get an idea of where all the shadows are and stuff. I'm working with a number one watercolour brush at the moment. Um, just adding a bit, I don't know about now, I'm using back in with the meat skewers that I use. As I say in earlier episodes, we made about six different types of ink pen and I showed you in different ways to use them. So that's really worth looking at too. So it's just popped up into the left hand corner now is a watercolour. Um, so you can sort of see with the trees in the background in that watercolour that I've used the same technique but I've been using paint rather than ink. Um, so it's what we call a wet in wet technique. This is a painting from one of my books. It's a uh, full size watercolour. It's probably oh, maybe 55 centimetres um, square. And also um, a number of my films are on basic drawing and advanced drawing. Also techniques involved using soft pastel. There's um, oil painting for beginners and advanced. Really I'm just sharing the knowledge that I've used for my painting, the technique that I've used um, over the years. Everybody um, finds their own technique and their own way of doing things. I'm just sharing with you the way that I do it and you know if you pick up any or work with any of these ideas and, and your own too I mean that's what it's all about now you can see I've signed my painting there already um, I, I always sign my pictures well before they're finished um, a painting for me is all about the work being balanced and sometimes I can spend hours with an oil painting or something and getting it really balanced and then just by plonking your or my signature in the middle of a blank area or something, if you like, upsets the balance of the painting. So by signing it halfway through or something, you, you don't get this problem. Probably I'm a bit nitpicking really, but anyway. I just put in that picture on the left hand side at the moment or rather my filmmaker did um, of fairy wrens they're local to Blackburn and very um, popular in this area where this house is in Moor um, I do a lot of birds of the uh, Brisbane Valley rail trail and um, they're very native to this area the birds and uh, the rail trail goes through Moor or just behind it through Linville, which is an adjacent town. As with all paintings, you know, I thought I'd finish back there and then I stood back and had a look at it and then thought, no, still, still some more detail to go. I wanted to bring that cow a little bit more forward and a little bit more shadow. And then, of course, always there's the danger of that you just keep going too much, you know. 
So there now on the left is a, a second pitch oil painting of this same house. Um, slightly different to the oil painting earlier. This one, there's like a young girl who's been delivering vegetables in like a, a, like a, a trolley thing with a bike. You know, we had the vegetables in the olden days and they've spilt all over the road. So one good thing when you do a sketch like this, um, you can use it with so many different paintings. You've, you've got the foundation once you've done the building once. That's my little um, trademark that's just popped up in the corner there in the painting, um, next to the painting. The trademark, as I say, is in all my books and I also include the little dog somewhere hidden throughout all of my paintings. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed um, watching this film and um, you can find me on Facebook. Just search for Janet Skinner, artist and author. And I also have a website, JanetSkinner.com. On Facebook, I upload my um, just stills of each painting as I do them each week. And more or less each week, there are films posted of the paintings that I do. So, you know, hope you enjoy the little tips. You can always, on Facebook, um, send me, private message me any questions you have about any particular technique. Thank you very much for watching the film. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you like and subscribe for all future uploads. My Instagram and Janet's Facebook contacts are in the link in the description below.